Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Welford Weaves. My name is Rachel. I can be found as Woolen Spinning on uh, Instagram and I can be found here on YouTube as Woolen Spinning as well or youtube.com slash Rachel Smith. Thank you so much for checking out another episode of Welford Weaves. Uh, these come out on uh, the Tuesdays of the month that I'm not live streaming. So they sort of come out on the opposite Tuesdays, generally the second and fourth Tuesday of every month. And that does flux and change a little bit. So thank you for just kind of paying attention and for uh, being here. I really appreciate it. So. In Welford Weaves, we talk about my weaving and what's going on on my looms. And this started as an opportunity for me just to kind of take some of this content off of the podcast, because if anybody watches the podcast week in, week out, sort of month over month, you'll notice that the podcast has progressively gotten longer. It's become a little bit unruly in terms of the amount that we try to cover. And in an effort to sort of simplify that a little bit and uh, pull the content into the places that make sense to have it all lined up sort of in, in various places, um, it made sense to sort of put the weaving content into a separate episode that you guys would be able to watch who are specifically here for the weaving content. Now, my long-term goal is to pull my weaving in the direction of weaving primarily with my hand spun. So there will be um, a, more and more overlap, but we'll kind of cross that bridge as we get to it. In the meantime, there is a countless number of commercial yarns to work with and combining some of my hand spun in my weaving uh, just makes sense to sort of look at those yarns uh, that I'm working with commercially and start to think about how I could recreate them or change them or change the uh, set on the loom to be able to incorporate my yarns more and more. So, I mean, the, the possibilities are endless and the, the thought of, um, you know, looking toward long-term those, the goal of, of completing a master weaver certificate, um, my mind just goes crazy with ideas of what I could propose for that final, final project. So, um, long-term that's sort of my, my goal and my plan. In the interim today, I put on my jack loom. I have a four shaft, 45 inch Leclerc jack. Uh, and in the interim, in an effort to sort of begin working my way through uh, different block weaves and, and block structures, um, I wanted to tackle the idea of crackle. So that is what we're gonna talk about today. So when I started to think about Crackle, I started to look in all of the regular places for information. I looked in old books, I looked online, I looked on the Jane Stafford Online Guild. Um, where else did I go? I kind of just started um, asking people like, hey, have you woven Crackle? What do you think about it? Have uh, you know, Do you have any thoughts about it? A couple of years ago, it's actually getting closer to three and a half years ago, uh, we had planned a guild workshop. Uh, we tend to offer a guild workshop every year that's weaving specific. It's usually a whole weekend of just weaving a specific structure, doing a deep dive with a local uh, teacher and trying to sort of piece together, okay, what does this structure do? What does it not do? What are its limitations? What are its... Um, what are its, what's it, its potential, because if you guys know anything about weaving, you'll know that every single structure has an infinite amount of potential. And uh, we were torn between doing overshot and crackle. The person that was gonna be teaching the workshop was really pushing for crackle. And I think at that time, most of us were sort of relatively new to weaving. We were just getting started. We were dipping our toes in and we ended up ultimately going with overshot. Unfortunately, um, I missed the workshop um, because and had to sort of withdraw at the ninth hour after organizing the whole thing because of my dad passing away. 
But uh, ever since then, I've had this kind of brewing thing in the back of my mind of like, why was Barb so excited about Crackle? Like, what was it that she wanted to delve into in that workshop? So we're organizing that workshop for this coming fall, which is a year away, but it's something to definitely look forward to. And in the interim, I've sort of started to delve into Crackle on my own. And now I'm starting to get this like really small inkling of what it was that Barb was so excited to teach us. So Crackle is not new. It is an ancient weave structure that comes to us via Scandinavia. Um, it is in Scandinavian. I'm going to put the word right here so that you guys can see it, but I'm going to butcher it, but I'm going to try. Um, Jamplandsvav. Maybe, maybe I nailed it. <laughs> If I didn't, I'm sorry. Um, but Mary Atwater renamed it Crackle for the crackling effect on the fabric that reminded her of the glazes that we put on pottery, which I think is actually um, probably quite accurate when you look at the, the fabric itself. It really does kind of give you that, that effect. Um, and because so many people are using it in such a contemporary way, just go on Instagram and search the tag hashtag crackle weaving. The, the stuff that comes up is so inspirational. It's unbelievable. Jane Stafford in her online guild got very excited during her cover of um, when she when she did the episode on Crackle, which I'll put right here for you guys if you haven't seen that episode yet. Um, it's part of season six and she got really excited about all the different things that you can do with Crackle. And I can see now after just weaving very small pieces at the loom, I can see where that comes from. So the other thing that I did was I pulled a bunch of my old books. So I, this is not comprehensive by any stretch. Um, these are not all of the books that I have um, that cover Crackle, but um, this is one of them that I found really super helpful, The Weaver's Book by Harriet Tibble. If you don't have this book, I would highly recommend that you find this book. Uh, it has been uh, invaluable to me. The way that she divides up the uh, weave structures is really, really helpful for a beginner like myself. So what I really like about it is that she actually discusses her, um, uh, each of the different structures as um, a, a class of fabrics. So she calls them uh, the plain weave class, the twill class, the twill derivative class, the unit class, the grouped thread class, the double weave class, the rhythmic weave class. So very different way of organizing her uh, information. And under the twill derivative class is where she discusses crackle. And what I loved about the way that she explains it in here is that you get a really good understanding of, of what overshot is and what overshot is not. And then she goes into what tw what crackle is and what crackle is not. And the reason why I'm flipping through the book as I'm talking is because my bookmark fell out and I was going to show you here. So she calls it the crackle system. So this is it here and here are your blocks. So crackle is a three shaft point twill and I will pull up some information, uh, some graphic for you here on the screen so that we can cover it a little bit more. This is by no means comprehensive. This is by no means going to um, cover, you know, uh, make a comprehensive discussion of crackle, but I am hoping to sort of introduce it to you, maybe get you excited about it and get you seeking some more information about it. And as I learn more, I will share it with you here. So the other book that I found incredibly helpful, and this was from my friend, Amanda Wood. Uh, she had recommended this, and actually Jane Stafford does mention this in her episode on Crackle on the Online Guild as well, but it's The Crackle Weave by Mary Schneider. This was very difficult to find. However, once I did find it, I think this one came from abebooks.com, A-B-E books, Abe Books. Uh, it was only a couple of dollars. So they are out there, they are available, and this entire little leaflet is uh, all on Crackle. And it's just on all the different um, uh, things on Crackle, all the Crackle, whatever you could want. It's just incredible. And I know Amanda, uh, my friend Amanda Wood, she found this incredibly helpful. Um, there are basic variations. 
So here, I wanted to, this. I had this page bookmarked to show you. This is Harriet Tibble's uh, way that she does her units and those circles there are your incidentals to make the blocks and the transitions work. And this is how Mary Atwater does hers. And again, there are your incidentals or your transition threads. So block A, um, I think that's, yeah, they, they're not written here. This one is Berta Frey's, how she does it. And then I'm not sure who Dorothea Hulse is. Um, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with her as a weaver. If anybody knows anything about Dorothea, please let me know. I had a great aunt named Dorothea. I am quite partial to that name. Uh, let me know. So there's there's all different ways of sort of uh, breaking up, um, uh, doing the twill sequence. Um, and so it's kind of interesting as you work your way through how the different uh, weavers in his, in our history have, have covered this. Mary Atwater was writing about Crackle in 1931, whereas Harriet Tidball, this book, where that draft comes from, was writing in 1961. So there's a 30 year difference there. And I actually do have the Berta Frey book and I can't remember if it was 1956 or 1947 that it was published, but it's right in there. Anyhow, so Crackle is derived uh, from point 12. It has a very sing-song nature to it, just like Overshot. Um, and so we're, we're looking at three shaft point 12. So we're going, you know, one, two, three, two. Um, two, three, four, three, um, three, four, one, four, uh, four, one, four, four, one, two, one, four, one, two, one. Yes. So that's block D, but again, depending on the author and depending on who has published the sequence, um, you, you, uh, different blocks are, are, are numbered differently. So you just have to be aware of, uh, where your, uh, source is coming from. Now the other book that I looked in, not to complicate things too too much, uh, was of course the book that we all go to for weaving patterns and that is A Hand Weaver's Pattern Book by Marguerite Porter Davidson. I have a softback cover a copy of this and this is a reprint. So this is probably the one that most of us who are buying books and are trying to look for books are probably purchasing. This was originally published in 1944, so you can imagine what you find inside. A book that very much uh, looks like it was published in 1944. There is, um, you know, handwritten drafts, um, and of course this would have all been arranged and, and photocopied on the page originally um, and, and typed out. So she talks about um, that Miss Mary Meg's Atwater has written numerous articles about crackle weave for publications dedicated to the interests of hand weavers. Um, Mr. Oscar Berrio uh, calls it a demi damask. It is useful whatever a close caught pattern thread is needed. Uh, it is useful wherever a close caught pattern thread is needed, as in linens, upholstery, and draperies, uh, especially those made in gray linen. I'm not sure why gray linen specifically. <laughs> Um, but in 1944, maybe that is what was available. So I found, um, and I actually, I completely played copycat. I'll say that right off the bat. My friend Amanda um, had put on the Stash Crackle Pop towels um, from Jane Stafford, and these are available on the Jane Stafford website, and they are Sharon, designed by Sharon Broadley. And you can see here that this graphic is a very intense graphic with these um, striping, and then you get these really cool diamond kind of effect. And some of the other towels, you can create more of a cross effect, and I just was really taken with this. I, lo I loved how modern it was. It felt very current, it felt very new. And um, uh, Sharon Broadley designed this and then now it's on the Jane Stafford website and all of the proceeds go to the MIWA Fund Foundation. And if, for those who aren't local to Vancouver and don't know what MIWA is, uh, MIWA works very, very closely with um, dyers and artists in residence in India, um, with rural farmers, rural artists, um, textile um, people, and uh, it's a, my wall originally was a storefront. It is still a storefront. You can buy dye stuffs, you can get fabric, um, you can buy um, articles of clothing, things that have been stamped, made, 
um, in India. Anyways, um, the Maiwa Foundation supports these workers and these people um, who are creating this stuff in India. So that's where the proceeds of this pattern uh, go to. The Sharon says right in the pattern notes that this original draft, before she started to play with it, modernize it a little bit, use current yarns, uh, current colors, all that kind of stuff. It actually did come from Marguerite Porter Davidson's book. So this is it right here and it's called A Scandinavian Favorite. So right now, this one here, number three, I've been weaving this particular pattern on my loom um, in those pattern blocks separated by about a half inch of uh, plain weave in between, just like Sharon did with this towel here, except that she used the diamond sequence instead of the cross. So that's actually this one right here. And then this is it inverted. And this is it with some, some blocks uh, where you treadle a longer block to draw out that line. So this is block A treadled uh, more and the weft uh, traveling across to, to elongate that. So it's this pattern here but instead of continuing in that four, three, two, one, four, one, two, three, four kind of rose path fashion, um, we've just extended that block here at the end. So we've gone uh, four, three, two. It's right here, actually. It's this one right here. Four, three, two, one, four, one, two, three, four. Instead, we've treadled that, but then when we get back to four, we're going to continue to treadle that to lengthen it out if that makes sense. It might not, but I hope that it does. So what I thought I would do is share with you a little bit of sort of some of the preliminary things that I've kind of gleaned from working with the crackle. Um, American crackle is typically done with a plain weave ground or a tabby ground. So every other pick, uh, every other pick you're, you're throwing a tabby. So I tie, I have a rising shed loom. So I've tied my loom up as a rising shed. So um, if I was using a sinking shed loom, I would have tied it up for a sinking shed, which um, is actually how the, I don't have it here with me, but the draft that's written from the Jane Stafford Online Guild, it's specifically written for a, a sinking shed loom. Um, and these ones in here are specifically written for a sinking shed loom as well. So I had to reverse everything for my jack loom because I have a rising shed loom. Otherwise I'd be watching everything woven in reverse and looking at the bottom of the fabric. Um, the pattern thread is typically a little bit heavier than the uh, tabby pick and so what I've used is what's called for in the pattern I used 2-8 cotton for my weft and my warp uh, set at 18 ends per inch and then Sharon Broadley actually uses two picks of um, two threads of the 8-2 cotton held so that it's doubled which is basically 8-4 cotton and so I had some 8-4 cotton in my stash so I've used a combination of sometimes I've used uh, two uh, threads of the 8-4 to get a certain, uh, sorry, the 8-2 to get a certain color. And then in other places, I've just used 8-4 cotton. So it just kind of depends on what color I wanted to use. So let's have a look at the draft and have a look at sort of what it looks like and how you can start to identify the blocks of the crackle um, and how they work. And then we'll have a look at some of the fabric. So what I thought might be helpful is if we actually get onto Fiberworks itself and start to understand how these blocks work and how they move and just what is a three point twill. So a three point twill is where we actually would have uh, one, two, three, two, one. That is a three point twill. So instead of, you know, when we think of point twill, we often think of going to, um, let me just go to point here. Uh, if we think of uh, you know a lot of a lot of the twills that we often work with are four point twills, right? Because we've got four shafts, so one two three four three two one, uh, one two three four three two one, and we just repeat that over and over and over again, and we get these beautiful point twills. So if we take that one step further and we go back and we sort of say, well, what about if we do a three point twill, three, two, one, three, two, there we go. Now we've got a three point twill. Now what if this one, two, three, 
two becomes a unit. One, two, three, two, one, two, three, two. That becomes uh, three blocks of A. So one, two, three, two. One, two, three, two. One, two, three, two. This is how Harriet Tibball does hers. Uh, Margaret Atwater does hers a little bit differently. Harriet Tibball's like, nope, let's keep this simple. It's going to start on the same shaft that the previous one uh, ended on, and it's going to be two, three, four, three. So we would need an incidental here. So I'm going to make my incidental red just to keep it simple for you guys. So that's going to be my incidental. Now block C, Harriet Tibball likes to make hers. She puts an incidental here. That's an incidental so that we can start our block C on three as well. Three, four, three, two. Three, four, nope, that's not right. Three, four, one, four. Three, four, one, four. It's very sing song. Here's another incidental to bridge that gap between three and four. And this one is, oh, sorry. Four, one, two, one, four, one, two, one. So A block is here. One, two, three, two. B block is here, two, three, four, three. And then C block, three, four, one, four. And then D block is here, four, one, two, one. And I can just move this, move this over so that uh, you can see that here. Four, one, two, one. Just going even higher. If we had an eight shaft, we could just go up here. Four, five, six, five. All right, and then we put these incidentals in between because our next block is starting on the same block, on the same thread as our previous block. So we can't have our four starting, finishing our block C and then have that same thread starting on block D. So we need an incidental. And so we, we plug that in there, we plug that in there, and we plug that in there. Mary Atwater's form uh, version only has two incidentals and those are between A block and B block. So A block and B block are bridged together with two, three, and then she starts her blocks um, three, four, uh, three, four, three, two, and then her uh, block D continues, block C and block D continue from there. So everybody has like a slightly different way of threading them. The blocks are the same, they're just shifted. So this is Harriet Tibball's way of doing it, um, which, is, which is pretty straightforward. So then how are we gonna tie up our loom? So we can tie up our loom in lots of different ways, but let's do it for um, a sinking shed loom to begin with. So we're gonna tie up our tabby treadles, one, three, two, four, and then we're gonna start on one, four. One, two, two, three, three, four. And let's say that we're gonna treadle a Scandinavian favorite, which starts on block four, I think, if my memory serves. Scandinavian favorite is going to start on our three, four for six picks. So let's just do three to keep it sort of relatively relatively straightforward. Um, and in between each of these, we're gonna have our tabby. And then tabby. And then tabby. And then tabby. Ding, ding. So you can see our incidentals here. And if we didn't have those incidentals, what would end up happening is we would have a float that would go over too many threads. Um, and so uh, we would have floats that were too long. And so it just gives us that, one of the cardinal uh, things about Crackle is that we don't have more than about three or four thread floats. And so that gives us that. So let me just put this all to white so that you can see kind of how A, B, C, D block um, goes. So this is how we would, we would treadle it. This is how we would tie it up. And then these are our blocks, block A, block B, block C, and then block D. So that's sort of just a very overly simplified version of sort of what this would look like. And you can see that we could just turn this into a profile draft. You know, we could have, um, you know, a three, uh, you know, a block here of A block and then a block of B block and then a block of C block, block of D block, 
C block, A block, and then back to back, B block, and then back to A block. And then all of a sudden, you know, now we've got this, this beautiful profile, right? So now we've got three, And look at that. Our graphic immediately emerges. Look at that. And what graphic is that? That is our graphic from our Scandinavian favorite. So if we know what to treadle, it's right there. Right there. Isn't that amazing? Right there. Block four. Four, three, two, one, two, three, four. So if we have a profile like that, then we can go to our loom and say, okay, well, I'm going to thread three A blocks. I'm going to thread three D B blocks, three C blocks, three D blocks. And then, um, and then you'll come back down my point 12. So I'm going to go up and then I kind of come back down and this is going to give me my diamond. And then the other half of my diamond is the treadling. So I'm going to treadle my, my, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, 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 diamond in the treadling. Uh, sorry to fumble there for a minute. So, you know, three, uh, so four, three, two, one, two, three, four. And we can just keep going with that, right? If we want to make our diamond a bit longer, we can go, you know, four, three, two, one, four. And then we can work our way back up again. Let me show you what that looks like. Four, three, two, one, four. There we go. I was like, that doesn't look right. Let's wait for it. It's there. I promise you it's there. So that's one way, and that gives us la da 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 this one, which is actually the one that I'm working on on the loom currently. So if you want to see it actually on the loom, I'll put in some video here, and that gives us that one there. So here I'm just playing, uh, I was trying to figure out how we could get those little crosses uh, that I love so much and how we could isolate them. And so what I did was I took them out of the draft and I started to create, um, you know, sort of what would these little crosses look like. So if I go, you know, uh, a couple of picks of, of, of block one. Um, you know, so uh, uh, treadle two here, which is one and four. One and four against three and four gives me these these beautiful little crosses, and you can see how um, with plain plain tabby in between, you, we we create these these crosses here, and and that's what gives us that is is this undulation of um, you know three four three sorry four three four one. Um, and I've just done the opposite on here. I've done uh, four, four, one, two, one, four, one, two, one, four. Um, and you get this this really cool cross pattern. So I'll try that on the loom and I'll report back for next next time. And then of course the other thing we can do is we can elongate. So if you have the propensity to just play, um, I'm sure that you can start to see like, you know, that this, the, the, your mind just starts to go wild with what you can do with this, right? I mean, it just, the possibilities are endless. You know, we could make this more of a point as we work our way back up. Um, and then we can, you know, I mean, it just goes on and on and on. I do recommend though, if you are going to hop on some of this stuff and figure out how some of this stuff works for yourself, I do recommend that you get on Fiberworks or one of the other drafting softwares that are available for hand weavers and really start to delve into like, how does this stuff work? How do you actually make it happen? And then take it one step further and jump on the loom because until you actually get it on the loom and you actually see it in real time, it, it is quite confusing. And you can see that even me just sitting here explaining it, 
uh, and verbalizing some of my thought process is difficult at best. So please, uh, you know, take the opportunity to look at your own books that you have access to, start to read a little bit about the structure that you're interested in, and then go from there and start to piece it all together. I am so drawn uh, to this weave structure for some reason. I just keep coming back to it again and again. So I thought it was time to put it on the loom and put it to the test. So I will continue my reading, I will continue my research, I will continue learning about this structure, and hopefully I'll be able to share more and more with you here so that it's clear and so that you guys can understand sort of my thought process when I'm approaching what, what's working, what's not working. So I'll see you in a couple of weeks with another episode, hopefully some follow-up to these crackle towels. And until then, happy weaving. Bye guys.